another very popular topic that's coming this week, and I guess I have to ask you about it. What are your thoughts about Kenny Omega being elected into the Wrestling Observer Newsletter Hall of Fame? <laughs> I mean, what do you say at this point? What do you say at this point? Dave has, I wish I had someone as dedicated to my furthering my career and standing in the community and my legend and my, my profile and my brand and et cetera, as uncle Dave is for Olivier. But can you honestly tell me, Brian, do you think in the, is this the first case? Cause I, I know he, he never used to rig it. I've been a voter for 30 something years. Didn't always get my people in. But I voted because I, I knew a bunch of other people had voted. I assumed it was on the up and up. I, the only thing that I've heard, I have not seen the issue yet. The only thing that I've heard is that he got his, the base of his support came from wrestling, how does he phrase it? Wrestling journalists, reporters. wrestling writer, wrestling reporters. What? retired wrestler because those are the categories what are the categories you probably know them better than i do wrestling reporters historians, historians reporters active wrestlers retired wrestlers active wrestlers retired wrestlers name me a historian or a retired wrestler that would have wasted a vote when when wild bull curry is still not in the wrestling observer hall of fame or big daddy for those across the pond or whatever, for all of the case of the sake of the names, the great names in our industry that are not still yet involved in this Hall of Fame, what historian or what retired wrestler is going to waste a pick on Kenny Olivier? So that boils it down to current wrestlers, and I have no faith anymore in current wrestlers for the most part, and wrestling reporters. And we understand the base of the support was from reporters. So did did Dave just send out a bunch of new ballots this year? Boy, the ballot, the ballot fucking controversy may not be the one we thought it was. Did Dave send out a bunch more ballots to wrestling reporters that would vote for this twat just to get him in the Hall of Fame and not be embarrassed when his self-proclaimed greatest wrestler ever in the history of the world didn't get into the hall of fame that he sponsors there. Therein lies the question. Well, let me say a few things. Cause obviously I'm in the midst actually right now, this weekend of recording the six Oh five super podcast wrestling observer hall of fame special, where we get different panel discussions with various voters from across the world and get everyone's point of view on this. You did vote by the way. Did you vote for Kenny Olivier? I did not vote for Kenny Omega and you were not on the twinkle toes train. I'll be honest, I wouldn't vote for him because he's in the middle of his career. Whatever you want to say about what he's done, bad or good. And obviously you could point to certain things like the Okada matches, like the success in the Tokyo Dome. There's a lot of people who say there would be no AEW without Omega versus Jericho. And again, AEW is still well, in its now, infancy, so we can't really that. judge if that's a... Uh, a noteworthy thing going forward or we not. We can't judge if that's a good thing or a bad thing, though, right now. But I wouldn't vote for Kenny Omega for the reason that he still hasn't done anything in America. He's in the middle of his career. It's too early. Because then you're really just basing it on a few, a very short period of time. But, you know, one of the things... But he's the greatest wrestling artist of all time. Well, again, that's hype. I don't believe that. I don't... That's what I'm saying. Could What I'm saying is, could Dave face... Could, it, could Uncle Dave have been here now that I'm thinking like our current ex-president? It Could he face the idea that in his own publication that his, his guy that he has proclaimed the greatest of all time, better than Flair and Funk and Steamboat and this guy and that guy and the other guy, wouldn't get in his his Hall of Fame that he has built and sponsored and, and runs every year. So he, he sent out a bunch of ballots to people he knew would vote for the I year. don't I don't personally believe that. I think there are a then lot how of how did he get in with no with no historians and no retired wrestlers voting for him? Let me put it this way. Without naming names, I'm familiar with some ballots of some modern wrestlers. And 
If you're a historian, you'd be horrified by these ballots. <laughs> horrified. And there's no justification for some of these people being voted for when you could say, well, this person was really good. This person had some good matches, but not Hall of Fame level in any way. You'll hear, well, he was one of my favorites. Or, well, I liked watching him when I was a kid. So, I mean, the active wrestlers, that's a category where maybe there should be less ballots sent to them. Reporters, I don't know who all the reporters are that are voting. Some of these goofs, and we've talked about how anyone can anoint themselves a wrestling journalist. I don't know who Dave sends a ballot that's, to or not. That's the bitchly rule, right? That would be the Yenta Bixenspan rule. But I think it's important to note here, because I've seen a lot of people on Twitter jump on Dave for this, and it's not fair. Dave didn't just put him in the Hall of Fame. There is a body that votes. And it's a body of various ages across the world, active wrestlers, retired wrestlers, people like me who study the history of wrestling, and I guess people who report in one sense or another on the current events in wrestling. But I'll give you another example. Get away from Kenny Omega for a second. And I've talked about this on my special, taking nothing away from this guy. Because I've heard nothing but good things about him. I never met him, never talked to him. Heard nothing but great things about him from everyone who I know. Uh, with that, I had never talked to Bob Brown or Bob Geigel about him, but everyone else. But Larry Matisic came in first. Oh, what a prick he was. No, no, no he no, was Larry Matisic. was a great guy. I great just guy. that because of the line. He <laughs> was the number one person voted on by historians to be in the Hall of Fame, above, I'm looking at the list here, above Don Owen, above Sergeant Slaughter, above Jackie Palo, above Morris Siegel, above Enrique Torres and Ted Turner and Bill Goldberg, and, uh, you know, the list goes on and on. I got nothing against Larry Matisic. Larry Matisic was a great historian. Larry Matisic was a color commentator for years. He was uh, the voice of St. Louis Wrestling for a lot of people. He was obviously Sam Mushnick's assistant. For a number of years, he went off on his own and promoted for a short period of time. I'm taking nothing away from him. But to me, I don't look at that and say that person should be in a Hall of Fame because at that point you're saying, you know, anyone should be in the Hall of Fame. This person was around wrestling for a long time. We liked them. They should be in a Hall of Fame. Well, no, you, uh, I got to pump the brakes. You're not saying anyone just because he was around for a long time. We all liked him. You're saying that you've lowered the bar because of the other people that are not in that even though that their uh, careers may not been have long as long or they may not have been as popular they were much more prominent on camera or in front of the people or more uh, pivotal in terms of running the show themselves etc cetera, etc cetera. morris siegel but still if you put larry matisic in a hall of fame that's a uh, wrestling hall of fame that's a lot more palatable than putting in you know, the guy that ran the mud show and where everybody got infected. Now, in a sense, you know, and this is an interesting way to look at it that came up on my special. Kenny Omega and Larry Matisic, if there was a Wrestling Observer newsletter, Hall of Fame, if you're really basing it just around the world of the Observer, they both belong in. Because obviously Kenny Omega, for the match quality that Dave champions, he would be in there. Larry Matisic was someone who spent a lot of time talking to Dave, educating Dave. He would be in there. I mean, if you're, it's actually a Hall of Fame around the Observer, but it's not supposed to be just that. It's supposed to be a wrestling Hall of Fame looking at the entire body of professional wrestling history. So, so you, who padded the ballot box for Olivier? I can't answer that. I can't that answer was the, that. That was the question that what I had posed earlier. So that's my comment about... Uh, you know, maybe we're we're looking. Maybe we've been misdirected. The election that we thought was was uh, was fair was really crooked, and the election that that uh, the ex president thought was crooked was really fair. But the the Wrestling Observer newsletter, the ballot box got padded. That's the only. I mean, hey, that people take Dave's opinion now somehow instead of the evidence in front of their own eyes. He has said these things for so long that that people think it's. It's true, and it must be so, and we've got to get on this bandway. We don't want to not vote for a, a winner. I don't know. But I refuse to believe that any serious, credible wrestling historian or any serious, credible retired wrestler, because you'd have to be 
near 50 at least by that point, would not be offended by this guy's whole presentation, pretty much. So that's just me. And again, I look at it from the other way, good or bad, he's in the middle of his career. You can't look at his entire body of work right now because we're really just looking at a very short period of time where he was elevated to main events in New Japan from that point forward. I, you know, I don't think there should be people on the ballot while they're actively working. And I get it. No one retires. You know, Jack Briscoe retired. I mean, no one retires. <laughs> but I think- And hey, if they ele- they've elected him now, what happens if he gets caught with Riho playing with his Sega? Oh, will you stop it? <laughs> and, <laughs> and then there's a big scandal. And then, and then they've got to have a special recall to see whether he's voted out of it or not. Uh, a, I... I'm going to guess they're not going to catch him with Riho playing their Sega or whatever that connotation is supposed to really mean. But secondly, hey, look, the Observer Hall of Fame voters didn't vote Chris Benoit out when they had that option. Well, I've still got faith in Omega. 